It's time. Hello, and welcome to the 2011 Tom Benton Awards. I'm your host, John Krasinski. Anyway, let's get down to it. As you can see, the lights are dim. It's a very small, intimate area. We're going for a very intimate feel this year because I think that the Tom Benton Awards are almost definitely Springfield's most intimate awards, besides the Rotary Club Awards. First off, the Tom Benton Award for Best Tom Benton Award goes to the, uh, hmm, well, gotta check this one. Surprise upset goes to the 2011 Tom Benton Awards. Hey, all right. Let's just keep moving on. Hey, a little anecdote. After the 2011 Tom Benton Awards, a lot of people came up to me in Shaw's. But then a lot of people came up to me in Shaw's and said, Tom, what's the point of the Tom Benton Awards? And I said, I don't know. Uh, okay, Tom Benton Award for remembering last year's Tom Benton Awards was initially going to go to me because I remember that they happened. Don't try to fool me. I was there. But actually now it goes to the Rushford Emery's. Ember and Kara. Because all year they have just been so excited. They're like those kids that can't wait for Santa to come. And all year it's like, is it Christmas yet? Is it Christmas yet? All year they've been like, is it time for the Tom Benton Awards? Are they here yet? Can we get t-shirts? Can we name our kids the Tom Benton Awards? And I said, no, 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 and yes. Uh, but now they're finally here. So you two, you deserve this award. Now, Tom Benton's favorite actor of the year award is always tough because I can't remember which actors I liked in the year because I'm always liking new actors. So this year, uh, it was pretty easy to choose the award because I forgot about the category and then I was like, who do I really like right now? And I figured it out. So this year's Tom Benton award for favorite actor goes to Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. Let's hear it for him. All right, Inglorious Bastards, X Men: First Class, uh, Shame, which is the one where he's like sex crazed in New York. Um, it's just incredible. So, Michael Fassbender, you you deserve this. You really did. Now it's time for the Way to Honor Tom Benton Award. This one's new because I wasn't really being honored last year. At least not when the awards happened, although the honoring came soon thereafter. And my favorite tribute to myself this year comes from my buddy Martin. Hold on, let me grab it for you. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, I can't figure out how to work cameras. Tom's Cream. There's a label on it that says, you know, every lewd thing you can imagine <clears throat> about what it will do for you. But uh, Tom's Cream was created by Martin and distributed uh, basically to whoever would take a drink, which was an impressive amount of people. This is the award for the Best Sex in Music Award. Now, usually this one's really easy. Because when you think of sex and music, who do you think of? Lil Wayne, right? Probably, maybe. Not this year. No, sir, this year's the Best Sex and Music Award goes to Frank Ocean for Nature Feels. Let's get a little clip of that. I've been meaning to fuck you in the garden. Oh, man. I'm horny just hearing it. So. Um, which actually segues into our next award. This is a... This is a very sad award. This is the Tom Benton Award called the Wheezy Made Me Cry Award. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this year Wheezy Made Me Cry. I waited like everyone else with bated breath for the Carter Four. And then it came. And then I didn't. And that's a first with Wheezy. 
Now, it's still pretty good. I mean, it's better than most of the hip-hop that comes out, but... Big disappointment. So this year, Wheezy, you take home this award. You made Tom Benton cry. This next award is a personal favorite. I'm very excited about this. This is the picture that I have saved on my hard drive but just can't stop looking at. Please make it stop. No, I can't. I'm going to keep looking at it. Award. And this year, it goes to Devin Blaze. That's right, Dev. This one's all yours. Let's get that thing up. <coughs> oh, yeah. I can't stop looking at it. I'll be writing, you know, and just tapping away at the keys. or I mean, maybe like if I'm on the road and I have my laptop with me, I'll be like, I gotta pull over for a sec. I gotta look at this. And I stare at it 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I don't, it's really, it's, it's addictive. And you can probably see why. I'm sure that many of you have already taken screen caps of that photograph, so... Okay, Tom Benton's Get Ready But I Fucking Loop It Award. Oh, that's not it. Now for Tom Benton's Get Ready Because I Fucking Loop It Award. Now this award goes to a song that I can't stop playing. When I'm shuffling my iPod, if it comes on, I'm going to stick with it. You know, I mean, this is the one that just, it's going to be played over and over and over. This year it goes to Godier's Somebody That I Used To Know. Let's hear a little clip. Heard that one on Gossip Girl, so. Tom Benson's Celebrity Crush Award. Now last year it went to the delightful Kristen Kroik of Smallville. You know, Lana Lang. This year it's a three-way tie. Between Adrian Palicki Christine Veronica and the magnificent Diablo Cody. Oh man, the cat I found dead under the desk award. This is a new one, and this is probably, hopefully, the only year that it will be featured in the awards. Um, and it goes to a cat that I found dead under a desk. Now, what happened here was this summer, uh, you know, my brother likes to. Uh, point to cats when they're sleeping and be like, huh, look, so-and-so's dead, because they look like they're dead. That's the way that they sleep. And uh, so uh, we had a cat named Inga Wagner who was very strange, but a very cute little cat. She had very tiny feet and a very round belly and uh, looked like somebody left her out in the rain to rust. So uh, I came in from outdoors. I don't know what I was doing, but I think I had my shirt off. And... Sam said, oh, Inga's dead. And I went, ha, 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 And he said, no, really, Inga's dead. So I looked under the desk, peered around her little face, and her eyes were wide open, and her mouth was open, and there was, like, drool coming out of her mouth. So, so anyway, long story short, we took her down back, and uh, we buried her. Um... And uh, when she was dead, we found her under a desk. So the Cat Under the Desk Award goes to Inga Wagner. The Seance with the Lowest Chance of Actually Contacting the Dead Award. Now this is a very unique award. Some of you are familiar with the story of uh, the sister who supposedly inhabited my attic. Uh, I'm not going to tell the story again. If you don't know it, you've missed out. You should spend more time with me. Um, this was at my old house, and, uh, it was decided that we would try to contact her, because 
she was just causing a lot of trouble. There was a very strange incident that happened this summer, actually, while I was home that uh, inspired the seance. So anyway, I rounded up a crew, my go-to people, who were, of course, myself, Sam, Devin Blaze, and Amanda Farnsworth. Uh, we gave ourselves a little name, like Ghostbusters, which was called the Ghost Fuckers. Um, not because we had any sexual intents with the ghost, especially if she was my sister. <laughs> that would have been a little weird. Um, but, uh, yeah, we just wanted to see if she wanted to chat. So, anyway, um, we tried to contact her through two seances, one in the attic and one... Somewhere else, I don't remember what, maybe the basement? And uh, it went a little something like this. This is an actual, this, this is this is how it went. We are trying to summon you, ghost. If you have anything to say. <laughs> Devin, I know that's you. No, no, that was the ghost, that was the ghost. I'm sure it was. All right, here we go. Hey, huh, huh, oh my god, I'm so high. Huh. Yeah, oh yeah, you are high, aren't you? Want to take off your shirt? Dude, Dev. Hey, wanna, wanna make out? Uh, Amanda, not Devin? Uh, no, huh, huh, I'm so high. Huh, huh. Sam, are you still here? Beep. And that was the end of the recording. So, as you can imagine, it was hugely fruitless. But we saw things. We saw things. Okay. Now for the worst thing I saw in a dark room full of sweaty, hungry people award. And it goes to Green Lantern. Second place was Sam. Ooh, the Chuck and Blair Favorite Couple Award. This goes to my favorite couple from, probably from TV, every year. And, uh, this year's Favorite Couple Award was a surprise to everybody, I think. Especially me. And it goes to Dan and Blair. Now, this has been boiling for a while, but it's only in Season 5 that I think it's really simmering. And it's really just a wonderful relationship and a wonderful pairing, and it gives me a little happy tingles every time I think about it. So, uh, Dan and Blair, you win this year's Chuck and Blair uh, relationship contest. Chuck Bass probably will not be very happy about that. Uh, we asked Chuck to comment. Here's what he said. I'm Chuck Bass. Okay, now for the Secret Ingredient Award. Ooh, what could this be? Well, this goes to Jenny Bradley for the time we watched Black Swan. Now, we saw Black Swan uh, in January with uh, Olivia Johnson of the deepest blue eyes you'll ever see and Lauren Sanderson of the... brown eyes and uh, uh, and anyway Black Swan is a horror movie disguised as a drama and I spent half of the movie really anxious about what was going to happen next or would have if I didn't have Jenny Bradley of the fiery red hair to keep me safe she was the secret ingredient in a recipe for surviving Black Swan Every time anything bad came on, she would go, <laughs> or she would go, <laughs> or she would do something like that, and it was hilarious, and it made all the difference in the world. So, Jenny Bradley, thank you so much. You get this year's Tom Benton Award for The Secret Ingredient. Okay, so this is the end of this year's Tom Benton Awards. Um, my New Year's resolution is not to be an idiot because it seems like I have been an idiot for a few years now, and I would rather not do that. Not all the time, but, you know, I've made some choices that were quite questionable. 
like deciding to start my own awards ceremony. So, my New Year's resolution is to not be an idiot. But, uh, that doesn't mean that there won't still be awards next year.